Today on The Big Questions, reincarnation. Have some of us been here before? And environmentalism. Is it the new religion? Good morning, I'm Nicky Campbell. Welcome to The Big Questions. Today we are live from Leicester Grammar School. Welcome everybody to The Big Questions. It's all that progression, isn't it? Birth, death, rebirth. Birth, death, rebirth. Until what? What's the final goal? What's the finish line? First of all, first of all the term moksha is derived from Sanskrit root mohakshaya, end of delusion. Most of humanity survives because they think they can fulfill their desires and sort themselves out. That's what human beings are trying to do. Mm -hmm. Sort themselves, send themselves out by fulfilling desires. This, according to Hinduism, is a delusion. When you fulfill one desire, three more appear from nowhere. And we forget, we keep getting caught up. So moksha means you recognize that really you cannot fulfill your desires by chasing after worldly objectives, but looking for a spiritual aspect. Mm. This is the meaning of the word moksha. If you're born with a disability, does that relate to something in a past life, Jay? No, it doesn't really. In, so fact, this is, in fact, Glenn Hoddle was taken to task because he met a disabled person. He said he must have done something bad in his past life. It's utter nonsense. The law of karma C is a very complex phenomenon. It says a lot of activities you do will certainly produce a result, but a lot of things which are completely out of your control are going to affect your future. A lot of physical forces are not under your control. Mm. A lot of other human beings interacting with your life are not under, under your control. So the result that you have is not just because what you set into motion. A lot of other things gang up and produce a result that is completely out of your control. You may have produced a minor contribution to the result you, you achieved. This is a more mature understanding of law so of karma. So it's hugely complex. You see this idea, this, people make fun of Hinduism saying, look, oh, do you believe that your mother is past life, they should become a cow, that's why you worship cows, they want rubbish. So try and ridicule a very serious in, you know, feature that we possess is, it has to be challenged. I say once you're in the human kingdom, it is highly unlikely you'll be born as an animal or an insect or a bacteria. It's highly unlikely, you won't be a dung beetle anymore. Well, well hang so, on, how did it start? Because two billion years ago, the first self-replicating yes, cells indeed. evolved. I mean, so what did the first replicating cells do indeed. to Start, reincarnate started. into something you else. See, the, the story didn't start two billion years ago, it started three and a half billion years ago. The first living being appeared on Earth. And this, is the, this still remains a mystery. Modern science is not able to replicate. Well, the first, first life form appeared, single two cell. Two billion years ago. Yeah, three and a half billion. No, two billion. Years. Okay, two billion. Yeah. I'll play along. The thing is this. The thing is this, the, the thing is, it continues that something underpinning reality is trying to manifest itself in the material world, and in the material world it starts, starts manifesting itself as a living thing, it's trying mm -hmm. to, something trying to pop through. And that process continues, it com multiplies, becomes more and more complex until it reaches the human level, because the most complex human feature in effect, in, in effect is reflecting the spiritual underpinning to reality. Okay. Very important, look, I come from the science lobby. Most people say it's not scientific, that's one of the cr criticisms. I say, do you understand science? Science is simply an observation, a pattern in reality, in nature, and we produce a mental model to capture that pattern and use it for our betterment, to harness nature. That's what science is about. Science doesn't prove a single thing. I'm a physicist. Science just offers hypotheses and jumps from one hypothesis to another hypothesis to explain okay. patterns we see in nature. Well, now, okay. reincarnation has been fully explored by uh, Professor Ian Stevenson, right. where he has explored 3,000 life, life stories of children. Some of the peer reviews were very disobliging about it. I was just about to come on to so, that, actually, yeah, yeah. all of... Carry on, carry yeah. on. The thing is, so it, it is as scientific as any of the scientific theories we have come across. Mm. And it's very crucial we explore this idea. The reason is it has got very important relevance for the modern okay. world. This, this system whereby you learn gradually and there's no, there's no judgment. You, every, every, through every life, you learn more. Yes. Don't you, Jay? It's not, it's not like the Abrahamic religions, is mm. it? One strike and you're out. <laughs> if you get it wrong. This is far more merciful, isn't it? It is, very, than the very, Abrahamic very religions. sensible in that right. sense. In fact, David Hume, one of the greatest philosophers said, if you wanted to believe in life after death, the most logical system of thought is yeah. the reincarnation of Hindus. Yeah, and it's far more merciful, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah.